the receiver has an internal clock inside. Clocks, they are not perfect. They are desynchronized with regards to a time scale reference. We will have three equations with three unknowns where someone has to give me, or I, I need to know the distance to the satellites and also the positions of the satellites, the information I need in order to solve for this equation system. The receiver is the one in charge of estimating the distance to the satellite. The distance is not given to the receiver saying, okay, this is your my distance. No, the receiver needs to estimate the distance. How? Say, okay, the distance to the satellite will be velocity multiplied by time. Which velocity? A speed of light, signals, electromagnetic signals, traveling through uh, the space, speed of light, constant value, distance, like speed of light multiplied by uh, the time of travel between the satellite and the receiver. If I know this tau, I have the distance. Now the question is how the receiver estimates the tau. The satellite will transmit a signal at what we call a transmission time, a time of transmission, and the receiver will receive the signal at reception time. In between, we have what we call a travel time or a time of flight of the signal. Then we multiply and then I will have this uh, tau. I, I mentioned before how this tau is estimated in the receiver. The receiver has a replica. This replica is compared to the received signal and the time of maximum cross correlation will be the time between uh, the receiver and the satellite. Then at the end will be speed of light multiplied by T of reception minus time of transmission. We are assuming several things. We are assuming. The first thing that we are assuming is that time of reception is perfect. Who is able to measure the time of reception? The receiver has an internal clock inside, but clocks, they are not perfect. They are desynchronized with regards to a time scale reference. This time of reception will be a time of reception in GPS time or Galileo time, or the one in the constellation, plus a delta time of reception from the internal clock of the receiver. This is the desynchronization of my clock with regards to the time of the, of the, the time scale, the real one, the true one. Then at the end, I will have a distance, something like this, estimated by the receiver, and this will be on one side will be the geometrical distance of the satellite minus the distance to the receiver multiplied by the unitary vector. I will, I will, I will show. This is the geometrical range between the satellite and the receiver, J, plus a delta a C multiplied by delta TR, and this is what we call BJ. I mean, at the end, this distance will be the geometrical distance of the satellite to the receiver plus this bias of the station regard, regarding to the GPS time scale reference. Then at the end, my equation systems, this is the equation x satellite minus xj uh, or i square, yi minus yj square plus zy minus zj square. This is the geometrical distance. Then what I have is not only three unknowns, which is the position, I will have also to estimate somehow which is the bias of my station with regards to the GPS time scale or the Galileo system time or the Beidou system time or whatever the time you want as a reference. That's why, as you see, this makes that we don't need only three satellites to compute three unknowns. We would need an additional satellite to estimate the fourth unknown. That, that's why we need four satellites four unknowns, four equations. Just to let you know, important order of magnitudes already. This tau is more or less, keep in mind, 70, 67 milliseconds. The time the signal travels from the satellite to the receiver is about 67 milliseconds. When the satellite is a high elevation. If you are in a receiver and the satellite is coming like this, when the satellite is in the closer part, this will be about 77 milliseconds in the, in the GPS case. When, the, when it's far away, the satellite, 
the this, this will be around 90 milliseconds. Then, in the closest part of the satellite to the receiver, will be around 67 milliseconds. Otherwise, can go to 90, 95 milliseconds when it's the satellite very far away. Then at the end, I have four satellites, four equations, four unknowns to solve for with this distance estimated by the receiver. What happened if instead of using only GPS satellites, I'm using GPS and Galileo satellites at the same time? The clock, this equation will be the same, but this clock, instead of being referred to GPS, will be referred to Galileo. Then it's like I will have and another unknown is the clock with regards to the other time scale. Now, if I have B constellation, dual constellation, I have an additional unknown to solve for. Then I need an additional equation and additional satellites. Then, two constellations, five satellites in view to solve for my positioning. In this case, we have three Galileo and two GPS satellites. Yes? These equations and these are the same. I can put the clock of the station regarding, of the user regarding to the GPS, plus the offset GPS Galileo. ISV is the intersystem bias, or the in this case, the GGTO, the Galileo GPS offset, is the difference between both the time scales. Yes? Then I can express my clock of the user regard to the GPS, and in the equation of the Galileo, I will add the offset Galileo GPS. Then usually what we do is express it like this, because in my solution, I will estimate as well this offset. If you have, for example, three constellations or four constellations, which can may happen, right? You will have here to add as well to the line of sights of the others, the offset between the reference time scale you want to put and the, the new uh, time scales, yes, of the new constellations. Then what does it mean? If I have a third constellation, I will need another satellite, six satellites. If I have four constellations, I will have, I will need seven satellites minimum for my solutions because I will have another unknown. The offset between the new constellation and the reference constellation I want. Then, now we know that each NSS constellation have to be designed at least to have four minimum satellites in view anytime, everywhere. Yeah.